Why do people some why do some people say DT and Archon isn't good anymore and inferior to Oracle? Because most people don't understand the difference between their skill level and when they're watching uh, a top tier Protoss who can micro like a god. That's why a dull day. <laughs> I'm like dude, two's aren't even good. I'm like, are you playing against are you playing against Serral? And are you also are you fucking, you know, showtime or something? Are you stats? Like if not, if you're not zest or stats or something, chances are something like DTs, which you can attack move with, Archons, which you can attack move with and actually do damage is pretty good. Oracle, you send an Oracle. You guys ever sent an Oracle into a base, not microed it and seen what happens? It gets killed by a single queen and it does nothing. Um, Oracles are incredibly fragile micro intensive units. Great scouting, great flexibility, good utility throughout the game. You need a buttload of APM to take advantage of it. You need a ton of APM, like an obscene amount of APM. I'm talking like not just three APM, not just four APM, I'm talking hundreds of APM. It's insane. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the thing, Dalde, right? That's the thing, man. It's like people like, ah, oh, people just have an overseer and some roaches ready. And like, don't get me wrong, even at like low GM level, I'll occasionally see a Zerg, they realize what I'm doing. I don't even try to hide it. And then they like skip link speed. They have like eight roaches and an overseer. And I'm like, oh, this doesn't do damage. And you see, this is the point where a lot of people go, oh, yeah, my build order is bad. My build order is bad. And they just like, you know, they, they throw it. They throw it away. And that's like classic bad stalker off thinking where it's like my opponent hard counted what I'm doing, knew exactly what it was minutes ahead of time and managed to defend it. And it's like, wait, 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 wait. Rather than just saying my build's bad, Let's think about number one, how can I hide the build? So that's something we can think about, hiding the build a little bit. Okay, that's cool, that's one thing. Um, so you can think about where you place your second pylon, where to put the twilight and the robo, how to give misinformation, maybe delaying warp gate a few seconds. Okay, that's cool. Uh, what else could we do? Um, how about we don't lose the DTs to those roaches and the overseer, and we just pull back, morph into archons, rotate around and do some safe follow-up damage and, and just still have a crisp follow-up. And it's, okay, maybe they're a little ahead, but it should be okay. Okay, fair enough, cool, cool. Um, but I try that, and then they've got 70 drones because they're so greedy after that. How am I supposed to win? This is so unfair. How am I possibly supposed to win? He just goes to 70 drones off the back of eight roaches and an overseer. He's infinitely ahead, and then he swarms me later on. And I go, okay, so this feels unfair, right? The person's like, yes, that's why, because the build's bad. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not because the build's bad. Let's actually take a step back and remember what StarCraft is about. It is about understanding what your opponent wants to achieve in the game and then not letting them do that. So if your opponent is doing something that feels unfair and like it destroys your style, chances are they're throwing a lot of eggs in the basket of trying to counter exactly what you're doing. So you need to stay, take a step back and you need to think to yourself, how can I expand how can I change this? How can I expand my view of what I can achieve with this harassment? And this is something I remember. I remember being like, whoa, is this build not good anymore? And you know what I did? I said, let's watch the replay from my opponent's point of view. Let's actually, let's actually understand what my opponent's doing. Most people are like, no, I just want to understand what my build's doing. And I'm like, that's the baseline of good play is understand how your build works, understand your play. That's, that's a good starting point. But to actually truly understand a style you want to start understanding the counterplay to it. Like think about so many like chess, martial arts, uh, so many games or, or, or uh, strategy games are, it's not about this is a good move, this is a bad move. It's, if, it's understanding what the next step is. And it's going deeper and deeper into if I force this thing, what can I do next that's good against that thing? So sometimes there's three, four, five stages of countering their counter back and forth. And that's why strategy games are so exciting when you understand those interactions. So in terms of players who skip link speed, make a fast layer, build eight roaches and an overseer that pop just as the DTs get there, you can actually go for a three gate DT rush where because your opponent's skipping link speed like that and being very defensive in the other game, you don't need anything but one gateway unit. You get three gateways up and your prism gets out obscenely fast and you actually warp in three DTs about 25 seconds earlier than normal the detection and the roaches aren't ready, you kill their third base. Okay, so that's one thing. Not a fan of that myself. That's hard to execute. All I do is I get there, I see the roaches, the overseer, I go, oh, you're one of these guys? You're, you're like so prepared? Okay. And I go back, I morph Archons, I warp in three DTs and a Zealot, 
or just three DTs. And then I pick my Archons back up. I go, drop in the main. Their whole army moves back. And you know what happens? Three DTs run in and kill their third base while my Archons ravage the main. And they're like, oh, eight Roaches and Overseer and 70 drones is actually not safe. You actually could just have done a second round of warp in and come back slightly later and hit two places at once. And they have no defense because they don't have spores. Because I watch it from their point of view. I'm like, wait, he doesn't have spores. He's got one Overseer and eight Roaches. Wait a second. That might counter the most obvious standard version of I'm going to attack the front with two Archons or two or four DTs in a prism. Does it counter the follow-up? Does it counter you splitting and hitting three bases? No, your opponent's being a greedy bastard. And it's because you're following this line where you're like, I do the same thing every single game and I don't expand my way of thinking. And don't get me wrong, you're going to lose games because sometimes you're following your line like this is a good build, this is a good strat and they'll do that and that you'll lose. The important thing there to be a smart and adaptive StarCraft player is to go, wow, he just slapped me in the face. It felt easy. I got crushed and there's something I'm missing, right? There's something disgustingly abusive that my opponent's done. My opponent's cut a corner Let's open the reap. Oh, he does. He doesn't build spores. Oh, he just builds eight to ten roaches and then just goes seventy drones. Oh, oh, this guy doesn't want to play safe. He wants to hard counter the first thing that I do, and then hopefully get a free pass to being up seventy supply and overwhelming me with ravages and banelings. Oh, this guy's this guy's probably pretty pretty bad. I actually, you know, I can actually just counter this. Okay, cool. So now when I see people who do this sort of stuff, I just shut them down, man. I'm like, oh, yes, it's one of these games. The Archons rock back up at the third base. They're like, I'm fighting you. And then they realize there's two DTs in their main, one in their natural shift clicked on the drones. And they're like, oh, that's not fair. You can't do that. Normally, you're meant to make sentries at home and a third base and go into a mortal production. And I'm like, yeah, but you're, I mean, you're, you're not playing safe. So I'm going to change my build order. And, and now I have a, a preset branch of my build that counters the counter. And the cool thing is, wait, 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 what if they actually keep building roaches and overseers and they play a bit safer or they add the spores after the first wave and they add a few more, oh, oh, so they actually are playing. Okay, so I can start with this, this follow-up but then I've got to realize that I've got to be quickly watching and if I see that they actually are well prepared, I got to pull those DTs back and I got to wait and I got to be more careful. Okay, now I go into a models and sentries because I've identified that you're actually being safe. And you can go down hundreds of twists and turns with this sort of I counter your counter, but then you counter my counter to my count to your counter. So I got to adapt and pull back with that and not commit with my counter to your counter. And then maybe if I wait two minutes for you to attack me, those DTs are just waiting and then they run in because I never actually showed the DTs. So you don't know about them. You know, there's like a, there's like so many so many cool things you can do in a StarCraft match, and this is why I really encourage people to be cheesy bastards. Um. As long as you've actually got your thinking hat on, you know, as long as you're looking for ways to adapt your dirty, aggressive play, right? That's why players often start out, that the ones who become good at StarCraft often start out as these very tech-oriented, crazy players, right? So they start that way because they're kind of going, all right, I'm rushing muters every game because I really like muters. And you're like, oh, oh, you're going to rush muters? I'm going to counter you with Phoenix. And they're like, oh, okay, this just got destroyed. Like, you know what? If they see my Spire, I'm actually only going to build five muters and then I'm going to rush Hydras to kill their Phoenix. There'll be a really, really quick Hydra all in behind it. They come up with these just like waves of, you know, people like, oh, that's just cheesy, dumb play. If they just build this, they'll stop the Hydras. But it's like, that's, that's a limiting viewpoint. If you're new to the game, if you're simply engaging with the fact that these muters are really good if I can surprise them with it and understand the true power of those muters. But then you start to understand how much it gets destroyed by their counter, the Phoenix but you realize that a fast Hydra push is really good against Phoenix and you start to engage on a deep level with just the counters within the game, how you can show one thing and swap into another. And you start to see that cheesy players learn the game quite quickly. And I'm not saying you should just be like, a lot of people think cheese just means you're literally smashing your forehead on your keyboard like a complete moron. Um, and there are players who play like that. Don't get me wrong. There are cheesy players who even get quite high level. Like I just build a barracks, a factory and a starport. And I make Marines and tanks and a medevac and a liberator, and I go and I try to build bunkers in my opponent's natural. And if my opponent's like, just doesn't react to the fact that I'm on one base for five minutes, it works. And I made it to high masters and therefore I'm good at StarCraft. And it's like, okay, no, you, you have no concept of how to play StarCraft. Like you're literally just taking advantage of people 
not being on po on point of their scouting. Like that's that's different. There's no reactions. There's no adaptations within that. But if you're actually paying attention to how can I adapt my style, um, how can I understand what my opponent's doing, and and that's one of the big things. So you know I always talk about have a solid baseline, have a solid game plan to start. Great place to begin as a StarCraft player. But you don't want to get stuck on that. A lot of people are like, oh, I just need to have a good build and good macro. And they never get past that. And I'm like, no, 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 this is your starting point, dude. If you, they're like, yeah, but you know, I'm not, I'm in platinum one and I just can't quite hit the build as tight as stats. Like my robo is just always 30 seconds later. I guess I just need to get better at building probes. And I'm like, oh, no, like you've, you've spent too long focusing on your own build and macro and you're still dying to one base all ins because you literally have no understanding of what's going on, on the other side of the map. Like, it's good to start with a game plan. I'm going to go for a Zealot Immortal attack or something like that, you know, and, and refine that and try to make your build order tight. But you want to take a step back pretty regularly and go, oh, I got, I got destroyed in this game. Let's understand my opponent's build. Let's understand what they did. And let's think about how I could counter their counter to me, you know? Maybe it's just cutting probes earlier and then take, making a ton of charge zealots. Maybe it's oh, swapping into DTs. So as they're pushing me with this big attack, bam, DTs clean them up, right? When things look really bad for me because they never have detection with this push. Like there's, there's so many cool creative ways you can solve the problem. So um, I think it's cool that people are engaging in this in the community and discussing things, but... Ever since like maybe 2013, when I started to have a decent understanding of StarCraft 2, I would say, I remember being like, oh, we need to stop talking in absolutes as a community. When someone tells you, your build's bad, 211's bad, it's not good, Zerg just does X. It's one of these things where it's like there, there is some knowledge and some, some valuable information in there, but you're being reductionist and you're not looking to understand it. Realistically, with any understanding of the game, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's good to... to you can start with a comment like that, but you want to try and justify it and explain, okay, so the problem lies within here because you're not flexible enough. It's very hard to switch out of this and go into this other thing that counters their counter. It's a very limiting build. You know, this other build is more flexible because it gives you options. If you're having that sort of discussion, it's fine. But a lot of people are like, don't do that build, just do this build. That build's not good anymore. This build's good. I watch Showtime stream and he never does anything but three oracles. Therefore, Archon Drop is bad. Uh, therefore... How, how, for how long were people saying Glaive Adept is not a good build order? What did we just see Zest do at IM with Glaive Adepts? No, is it, oh, Glaive Adepts aren't good. They're not good. They're bad. And I'm like, no, they're not. They're like, yeah, they're bad. They just get counted. And I was like, oh, God, you people are so fucking... And, and the crazy thing... So I, I, I don't mind pro gamers talking like that nearly as much as I mind you guys. If you're hanging out in Diamond masters anywhere and you're like i can't do it because the pros can't oh no <laughs> even at gm where i am on the ladder is a far reach from the, the top pro gamers a long far reach and i have unlimited room for creativity and I, I hope you guys have steadily been learning that from twitch plays pig from star lord from these different as long as there is an inherent logic in what you're doing starcraft's a game of so many mistakes no one plays perfect there's limited information as long as you have some sort of cohesive like logic to what you're trying to achieve in the game and you seek to understand what a next step would be and how to react and counter the counter, you're always going to get better as a StarCraft player. So this was my rant here impromptu because someone asked me why people keep telling them DT Archon Drop is a bad build and yet they see me win a lot of games with it. So thank you whoever asked that question. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this talk, but I, for me, it's something I get very passionate about um, is is I wish people would just be a little bit more um, focused on understanding the ins and outs of what is this good against and what is it bad against. So for you guys, if you want to action, what's an actionable game plan for this, all this shit I just said, clear your mind of everything I just said. And next time you're talking to someone about StarCraft or you're thinking about StarCraft, don't think, is this a good build? Or is this a bad build? Think, what counters this build? And what does this build counter? That's the great starting point for you becoming a better StarCraft player. I hope you guys open up your minds, expand your brains, and uh, start to use StarCraft for the unlimited 
uh, platform for self-improvement that it is. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Good night.